alma yapmayacağım. Ancak parlamento ayak bastığınız günden bugüne de savunduğumuz hep kardeşlik, demokrasi ve barıştır. Akan kardeş kanının durdurulmasıydı. Eğer tüm bunlar suçsa, evet bu suçu işledik. Bundan sonra da işlemeye devam edelim. I have always said, even if they shut me up in a fortress or chained my body, they could not shackle my spirit. With my last breath, I would continue to speak out and declare my message of peace, brotherhood and democracy. The Kurds are the largest ethnic group in the world without a nation. They have been divided between four countries, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Turkey. There are over 30 million Kurds, half of which live in Turkey. The Kurds of these lands share a long history of failed deals and broken promises. The governments of these countries have done everything in their power to limit or eradicate the Kurdish identity. In Turkey, any political party that has attempted to deal with the Kurdish problem in a non-violent and democratic way has been labeled a separatist, brought to trial and shut down. This is really a problem for the democracy of Turkey and uh, I hope that the High Court of Turkey uh, sees that uh, this behavior might be an obstacle for Turkey to join the European Union. This Turkish policy has radicalized certain factions of the Kurdish population, creating a fertile source of recruits for a guerrilla group called the PKK, the Kurdistan Workers' Party. The war between the PKK and the Turkish military has claimed the lives of more than 37,000 people. In a letter to the Prime Minister of Norway, Leila wrote, the conflict between the Turkish military and the Kurdish people in 1994 alone cost $12.5 billion. It has become, for the Turkish and the Kurdish people, an economic, political and moral disaster. It is impossible for both sides to win anything by violence and the force of arms. In 1991, Leyla and her friends formed a political party, which for the first time focused on a peaceful and democratic solution to the Kurdish question. Leyla was elected by 84% of her constituents and became the first Kurdish woman ever elected to the Turkish parliament. She brought to the Turkish National Assembly a voice for justice and human rights and a conviction that the war must come to an end. At age 14, Leila married Mehdi Zana, who forever affected her political beliefs. In 1979, he became the mayor of Diyarbakir, the largest Kurdish city in Turkey. After the 1980 military coup, Mehdi was arrested and sentenced to 36 years for separatism, making him an Amnesty International prisoner of conscience. After serving 16 years in prison, Mehdi was released and exiled to Stockholm. <laughs> 
Azu Leyla Zevcan Dine Pensar Embe Hevre Mane Ne Mane Eh, sorry, Jarki, as what we know. Kuremina, this is all France, all Paris. Eh, is a man, Anna Dajivan, Paris, Berda, Chu, Maraca, Diahotke, La Ankare, half the Jaraki, Chess, Sardana, I've been a year, I was on a way, as you live Rame. A Chawan Kizaman? Belle Baba. Je viens de sortir de la prison. J'ai vu ma mère. Elle va bien. Depuis une heure, euh, j'étais j'étais aux visites. Since 1991, more than 170 members of Leila's party have disappeared, been tortured to death while in police custody, or assassinated. Amnesty International believes that Hezbollah death squad, supported by Turkish security forces, committed these murders. In an article from the Washington Post, Leila wrote. If Turkish warlords kill the hope of a peaceful solution to the Kurdish problem, then there is a great risk that the Kurds will turn en masse to the camp of violence and Islamic fundamentalism. We've documented killings, disappearances, torture, mistreatment of members and supporters of that party uh, at the hands of Hezbollah, which Leila Zana was uh, a member of parliament for. There's concern that the authorities may even have actually encouraged or, or colluded with Hezbollah. And the death, the disappearance of 160 people associated with the same political party cannot simply be written off as a number of unsolved murders. It points to very alarming concerns of a pattern. It points, it points to the almost inevitable conclusion that someone was systematically targeting those individuals.